Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I wanted to show you the uh, Starblast 102mm uh, Altaz Travel Refractor. It's a 102mm refractor on top of a mount that swivels up, down, left and right. Very simple system, so let's go through some of the features. Uh, let's talk about the telescope itself. It's a 102mm diameter, that's about 4 inch. Uh, refractor telescope. Uh, it's got a 600 millimeter focal length, that's f5.9, so a nice kind of medium uh, focal length, good for low power wide field views of some of the brighter deep sky objects. And then uh, with the right combination of eyepieces, you can push this to pretty high power uh, for planetary detail. It's an inch and a quarter focuser. On the back, it comes with a 90 degree star diagonal, so that's very comfortable when you're looking up high in the sky. You don't have to kind of get underneath and either look upwards or at a 45 degree angle. It's, it's, it's built for uh, astronomy. Now, you could also use this for uh, daytime viewing if you want it as well. Um, if you're looking horizontally, you're just going to be looking straight down into it. Um, the image will be upright, but with a 90 degree diagonal, it will be a mirror image. It will be left and right uh, reversed. Uh, but for astronomy, that doesn't matter. There is no up, down, left and right in space. And the convenience of this angle is, uh, is, is perfect for viewing high in the sky. It comes with two uh, Plossel eyepieces. Plossel is a nice, good quality, um, uh, sharp images, uh, a 25 millimeter and a 10 millimeter eyepiece. So you've got your uh, 24 power and 60 magnification for the high magnification. With the uh, 25 millimeter eyepiece at 24 power, um, that's good for finding objects in the sky. Uh, speaking of finding, it comes with a finder scope, a little red dot finder. So you, you look through, you see a dot floating in the sky, just put the dot on the object and then it'll be in your field of view. So with the low power eyepiece, that's great for finding any object. Um, the entire moon will be in the field of view, plus some black sky around it. Uh, it's a little bit low power for planets. That's where the higher magnification would start to come in. Um, but if you were to point this at some deep sky objects, Four inches is big enough to see uh, the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, many star clusters, the Pleiades star clusters. And at 24 power, that's a really wide field of view. So you get a very beautiful, bright image of those big deep sky objects. Zooming in with a 10 millimeter, you can see the rings of Saturn, uh, the moons around Jupiter, uh, individual craters on the moon very nicely. Now, uh, 60 power is sort of a starting point for getting up into higher power. That's kind of, I'd say that's medium power, really. Um, if you really wanted to push this and get into some really nice planetary detail, I'd recommend at least getting a Barlow lens. Uh, it fits underneath the eyepiece here, doubles the power, so your 60 millimeter will turn into 120 power, and that's where you really get the nice planetary detail. Uh, a four inch scope like this can comfortably push to maybe 150 to 200 power at max before uh, it starts to get bigger but blurrier. You, you hit the resolution limit at about 200 power with this size scope. All right, let's talk about the tripod. So this is an Altaz tripod. It just, that means uh, altitude, up, down, and azimuth, left, right. So it just swivels left and right, up and down. Uh, it's not an equatorial mount, so it's actually a bit easier to use. You don't have to uh, polar align it. You don't have to figure out where Polaris is, get the mount centered, tracking right. It's just plug and play basically. You just plop it outside and you're ready to just start swinging around and viewing things. And it's got smooth enough motions where um, even at higher power, if you're following a planet along, you can just loosen the, the knob here and then just move it slowly left and right, up and down to track along uh, manually. And it, it's got smooth motion so even at high power it's easy to follow something. The telescope attaches to the mount using a narrow rail. It's the Vixen style uh, rail. So you could actually use this tripod for other small telescopes if you had something, as long as it's got that, that uh, narrow Vixen uh, dovetail rail. Uh, it will be universal in that case. We also sell a uh, uh, dovetail rail to quarter 20 adapter. So you could put a, uh, a camera on this, a spotting scope, uh, anything that uses a standard quarter 20 adapter. You just have to, uh, or a, a quarter 20 socket, you just have to get the quarter 20 adapter for uh, your uh, other equipment and then it'll bolt right on. Uh, below that, this is the Altaz head. Again, like I said, left, right, up and down. It's got a compass built in so you can kind of get your, your bearings when you're using it. And the tripod itself, uh, the, the legs are made of stainless steel, so it's it's small, lightweight, but still relatively sturdy. It holds this size, uh, no problem. And then you can adjust it. I've got it at its highest setting here. It will also go down lower. Now, I'm six foot and this does look a little bit low. So I recommend uh, getting a, a small chair, stool, uh, drummer's chair, something like that to view when you're, when you're using this in the sky. The lower the tripod, the more stable it is and the more comfortable you're gonna be viewing. Uh, I mean, the more comfortable you will be as well, uh, just so you don't have to stand up all the time. If you're using this for terrestrial viewing, then, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm six foot, so this might be just about right for viewing on the horizon. 
but for looking up into the sky, a chair is probably best. In addition to the two eyepieces and the finder scope, you also get a uh, moon map included with the telescope in order to uh, start identifying some of the small features on the moon. This is the moon map 260. Uh, it's got all of the interesting objects highlighted here, and then they're listed on the map itself. There's actually two maps. There's one on the back side and one on the front side. This is the correct image map, and on the back side is the mirror image map. So for a refractor like this, with that 90 degree star diagonal that I mentioned uh, is upright, but a mirror image, this is the map you'll be using to identify those, uh, those craters. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is uh, one of my favorite features of the scope is the uh, included uh, travel bag. Everything fits into this. So you'll uh, fit the tripod, the tube, the finder, the eyepieces. There's a little pouch for the eyepieces and the diagonal. Um, it all fits into this bag, so you're ready to go uh, when you go out camping, uh, keeping it all in one place, making it easy to transport. All right, well, there you have it. This is the uh, Orion Starblast 102 Altaz Travel Refractor, uh, a really nice, portable, compact travel, obviously it's in the name, uh, system for um, picking up, putting in the bag, taking with you when you go camping, just viewing in the, in the backyard, um, big enough aperture to see some deep sky objects as well as the moon and planets. Uh, overall, a pretty nice telescope to kind of get into the hobby of astronomy. Thank you very much. Clear skies.